In the early 2000s, Nigeria was just starting to embrace the world of mobile phones and telecommunications. Amidst the boos and uncertainty in the industry, a South African telecommunication company approached Pascal Dossier, a Nigerian serial entrepreneur and investor, to help them raise 40% of the funds needed to set up a subsidiary in Nigeria. MTN South Africa was to fund 60%, but they want Nigerians to have stake and evolve up to 40% of the required amount to set up the subsidiary in the country. During this time, the country's indigenous telecommunication company, NITEL, was at the verge of shutting down. The industry was uncertain and the risk factor of investing in telecommunication related investment was high. For these reasons, most money men and potential financiers that Pascal Dossier approached weren't willing to take on such risks. They didn't see the potential in MTN Nigeria then. They never believed that the Nigerian telecommunication industry could ever be revived. But the bold step that Pascal Dossier took changed the industry forever. Today's video is about the only Nigerian investor who believed in MTN Nigeria in 2001 when no one else believed in the company. But before we continue, if you love true, inspiring and motivating stories that will rekindle your drive for success, you are in the right place because that is what we do. If that makes you happy, take the like button with you the next time you want to take a business risk. It could just give you the push you need. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Pascal Dozier is a boardroom guru and an accomplished entrepreneur with over 50 years of business exploits. As an entrepreneur, Pascal Dozier started with nothing, but he walked very painful steps on the success ladder to the top. He has a fulfilled career in finance and business due to his hard work, unwavering focus, and determination. Pascal Dozier studied economics from the London School of Economics after which he obtained a master's degree in administrative science from City University in London. He worked in the United Kingdom for a while before he came back to Nigeria with his family. Life back in Nigeria was not rosy for him. It was immediately after the Nigeria Civil War and most people in Lagos then were trying to get on their feet. Things were very difficult, but he and his family coped very well. After a while, Dozier and his wife decided to start a business before spending all their savings. So he started his first company, African Development Consulting Group. Things were really rough for him at the beginning of his business journey in Nigeria. He would work for hours, travel for days in search for jobs and contracts. He would conduct marketing research and surveys for clients and sometimes he coordinated their campaigns. He basically did everything for the business. According to him, during this time, his first objective was survival even though he had ambition. He didn't have enough money to employ additional staff so his wife was helping him to do most of the paperwork she, and she really worked hard to help her husband succeed. After working hard for a while, African Development Consulting Group was able to secure high-profile brands like Pfizer, Nestle and other multinational companies operating in Nigeria as at that time. Soon, his company portfolio grew and became one of the most sought-after consulting firms in the country. Even the then Central Bank Governor Clement Ison hired Pascal Dossier to carry out a study on cooperative and commercial banks. And in 1985, Pascal Dossier was appointed as the chairman of the defunct Progressive Bank. And around this time, he decided to set up a bank. He applied for a banking license in 1990 and it took him about five years to get the CBN requirements right. And when he finally got the standard banking requirement of 20 million era, Diamond Bank started off with its first bank in Victoria Island. Pascal Dozier was the chairman and CEO of Diamond Bank till 31st December 2006 when he handed over to Emeka Onguka. In early 2000, MTN South Africa approached Pascal Dozier to help them raise 40% of the fund required to set up 
a subsidiary in Nigeria. The company was to fund 60%, but they want Nigeria to have stake and evolve up to 40% of the required amount. Around that time, the Nigerian indigenous telecommunication company, Nitel, was struggling to survive and at the verge of shutting down. The telecommunication industry there was uncertain and investment into telecommunication-related businesses were highly risky. For this reason, most money men and potential investors that Pascal Dozier approached very willing to take on such risk. They didn't see the potential in MTN as at that time. They never believed that MTN could survive in Nigeria. They thought it was not a worthy investment. With so many naysayers and negative comments, Pascal Dozier was almost second guessing himself, but he trusted his first instinct and took the bold step. With investment from a few friends who believed in Pascal Dozier's business instinct, he was able to raise half of the amount, which was 20% of the required fund needed to set up a subsidiary in Nigeria. MTN South Africa had to invest more money to make up the balance. Pascal Dozin knew that MTN was a diamond in the rough. He knew the company had great potential. While other investors and businessmen were seeing risk, he saw an untapped opportunity. He saw an opportunity to make a difference, to change lives, to be among the pioneers in an industry with so much potential. And his instincts were right. It turned out to be an excellent investment. Today, MTN is the largest telecommunication company in Nigeria, and Pascal Dozier played a major role. He was actively involved in MTN board, serving as the chairman from 2001 to 2019. According to him, most people he asked to invest in MTN later regretted as they would have made about 20 times returns on their investment. As of today, MTN is the first quoted company in Nigeria to report a revenue of 2 trillion naira. Just like Thomas A. Edison rightly said, Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. What do you think about Pascal Dozier's MTN story? Kindly share your thoughts in the comments below.